Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really neat pinwheel block. This pinwheel block is made with Michelle Palmer's fabric and I just think it's absolutely adorable. There's honeycombs here, bumblebees, and then more honeycombs. And what we're going to do in the end is we're going to take three of these blocks and we're going to add them to this absolutely gorgeous panel to make a small wall quilt. So I'm gonna show you all six blocks in the panel. There's two more of them, aren't they adorable? I absolutely love these bumblebees. I just think they are the cutest things and her forget-me-nots are just gorgeous. And then here's the last two. And I love it. it, even has quilt blocks for us. These blocks are around, I think around eight and a quarter inches. Well, my block here is 12 inches. So what we're going to do is we're using the Quilting Bee line of fabric by Michelle Palmer. And we're making 12 inch blocks here. And then I'm gonna show you how to adjust these eight and a quarter inch blocks up so that we can match it to our 12 inch block. So stay tuned. The first step is we need to get our pinwheel blocks all put together. And the best part of it, it's only three blocks. So if you'd like to see how I put together my pinwheel blocks, stay tuned and I'll be happy to show you. think you can see the whole block in there. One of the things that you've got to be really careful when you lay these out are things like these triangles. Normally uh, we take and I put these triangles together like half square triangles and on this block you just can't do that. If you do that what's going to happen is it's not going to line up with your larger triangle. So what you're going to do is take and put these ends together. So the process of what we're going to do with this one is the first thing we're going to do is put these two blocks together sewing this seam. And I want you to be careful because we're dealing with a lot of bias on this block. Then after we've sewn all of those we're going to attach the larger block to it. That larger block when it's all sewn together is going to square up to I believe it was six and a half. And then what's going to end up happening is our block is going to end up being a full 12 and a half, which is what we want it to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and sew all of these together. Then I'll come back and sew this together. Then I'll let you see how I go about squaring it up. Another little hint is when you go to put these together, your instinct may be, let me get these back on here correctly. Your instinct may be to take these and just put them right sides together and start sewing at the point. Please don't do that. Make sure that you're sewing it together on this end piece so that you've got the flat side going into your sewing machine and not that point. So here I wanted to show you exactly how I go about sewing these together. I do have my 37 foot on, which for Benina is the quarter inch foot. You can see I didn't have a plug to start with, so I did hold my bottom thread because I didn't want any problems with it. And then in just a second, you're going to see me grab my stiletto. There I go. Hold my pieces together as I get towards the end. Pull out the pin. And here we go again. I'm going to finish that up. Then I'm going to add another piece, but again, I'm adding it flat first because right here you can see that point. What would end up happening is if I put it in point first, that point would end up getting eaten up by my sewing machine and cause all kinds of a mess. And my, my seam wouldn't be right on my patch. So here it is with me just sewing it. And I will turn some music on so you can finish watching it.
All right, first thing you're going to do is go ahead and set your seams. Then once you set your seams, I always grab my strip stick. This is one of the really great tools to use to be able to help you get your seams open. So I'm just going to lay my piece across the stick, just finger press it open, and then I'll take the iron over it. And what that does is you end up with a really flat seam. So I'm going to do that to all four of my pieces, then we will work it, sewing them to the large triangle. All right, they're all ready to get pinned together. But one of the things I want to remind you on this block is make certain that you lay it down again. The reason being, when sewing these, if you sewed this edge instead of this one, what's going to end up happening is your yellow fabric or the bumblebees is going to be on the outside and not on the inside and then your pinwheel effect is going to totally disappear. So make sure that you're picking up your block and taking it and laying it out again after each step so that you're not ripping out the entire block and only small pieces. Now to pin this I'm going to lay one on top of the other. I'm going to pin my edges first, my points, at the outer seam or the outer edge. Then I'm going to pin the other side and then once I've done that then I'm going to lay it flat again and I'm going to pin my center and we've purposely pressed the seams open because we want it to lay as flat as we possibly can and when we get all done we're going to have an obnoxious number of seams in the center and we really don't want that to get real bulky and even spinning it won't work because there's just going to be too much bulk. So I'm going to get these sewn. All right, we're going to square this up. Now where we're squaring it up to is the full six and a half. And it, in order to square this up, the best thing to do is to start with this line. So what you're going to do is take your ruler and make certain that your 45 stays straight on that seam right there. What's going to happen then is all of your four corners are just going to lie or end up laying exactly where they're supposed to. So you can see what I've got is here's my 45 that's going right down and staying right on there. And I've only got a little teeny bit to trim all the way around. So I'm going to start with this side and then go across the top. And once I've done that, I'm going to turn it because I'm going to use this line again. So I'm going to take it. I'm going all the way to my six and a half here. I'm making certain that I keep my 45 degree line straight. And now I can just clip that right off again. And now I've got my nice six and a half inch block. I'm going to do that to all four of them, then we'll come back and we will get it laid out and ready to put all four blocks together. Here is my block all sewn together. I'm going to flip it over and show you the back side. And see I pressed all of my seams open. And I really think it goes together a lot easier when you press these seams open. The last thing that I did was took my 12 and a half inch ruler and just laid it down following the diagonal line here and just got it all nice and squared up. So that is how you are going to do your three pinwheel blocks, okay? Now, once we've got our pinwheel blocks done, I'm going to, I'm going to get you the other piece so you can see it. So next week, what we're going to do is learn how to cut up a panel so that you can take a smaller panel and add it to a quilt block that is made bigger. So I can't wait to show you exactly how we're going to do that next week. Thanks so much for joining me today while we made this pinwheel block. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Don't forget, join our Facebook page so we can show everybody all the neat projects that we're working on. And I'll see you again soon for the next step of how to make this gorgeous pinwheel block. See you soon.